YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. So I think it'd be very helpful for me to tell you exactly all of the equipment that I use to scan my film here at home. And basically I've kind of been fine tuning this process and these pieces of equipment for the last like entire year. And I think I finally settled on something that works pretty damn well and also works well for me given kind of my interests and my circumstances. So there's kind of two main focus areas for me when it comes to the kind of equipment that I have in the process. The first thing is I don't want something that's kind of big and clunky and requires a lot of space or like fixed space, you know, that kind of occupies a lot of area. And number two is versatility. I like having pieces of equipment that are actually useful for many different things as opposed to just one. Because of that reason, that's why I decided to go the camera scanning route. So let's go ahead and dive into the equipment that I have. First and foremost, I use a mirrorless camera. I have a Canon EOS R and that's the camera that I use kind of for not only videography, so that's what I use to record these videos, but it's also my main digital camera. I don't shoot too much digital photography nowadays, but when I did, let's say a year and a half ago or two years ago, uh, this was my main camera and I love it. Outstanding picture quality. You don't need an EOS R or anything in this budget area to scan uh, images. You can use literally any digital camera. Although I highly recommend a full frame camera, even if it's an older one. Full frame will give you kind of the, the nice uh, most amount of detail when it comes to the average 35 millimeter shot. And of course, if you're gonna be scanning medium format, then you probably want at least 35 millimeter full frame because anything smaller, you're not really getting that benefit of the amount of detail of your negatives. So I definitely recommend a full frame camera, whether it's a Canon, a Sony, you know, whatever you got out there, uh, that's on you. The other thing that matters when it comes to the camera is the lens. So I use a Sigma 105 macro lens. This 105 millimeter macro lens gives me full area coverage of a 35 millimeter negative. So it's basically one to one. Of course, that's a bit tough to achieve because you have to basically, you know, put your lens at the perfect distance and hold it there perfectly. And that's not, you know, very easy to achieve consistently unless you're extremely detail oriented, which I'm not. So I usually get most of my sensor coverage when it comes to scanning, but um, this could get you one to one if you really wanted. And the settings are usually kind of at F10 to give me kind of some of the sharpest potential image quality. And then also um, I'm on a tripod and I do longer exposures, everything at ISO 100 for the best detail and minimal digital grain. So that's kind of the camera aspect of this. The next thing I wanna talk about is obviously the tripod. So you need your images to be very still. Technically you can do this by hand if you just hold the camera over your negative. But from experience, I'm gonna tell you that that's pretty hard to achieve and your results are not gonna be very consistent. So I recommend you get any tripod. The most important thing here is that if you're using a tripod that you lean it. So you either use the corner of the table or maybe the edge and you lean your camera and your tripod forward. That way you can get over the negative and get that perfect or as close to perfect kind of flat area as possible. Obviously if you have a copy stand, that would make a huge difference. But like I said, I don't want additional clutter and additional things laying around and a copy stand would basically only be good for this scanning process. So I decided to not get one and to make my tripod work. Of course, a copy stand would be a lot easier and get you even more consistent results. The next thing I wanna talk about is the light that I use to scan. So I actually use a very cheap uh, LED tracing pad from Amazon. Um, it's worked out fantastic for me. I'm sure there's better lights out there that would get you technically even better results and more consistent lighting and you know all of the above. But I find that I'm not really missing out on anything major by using this cheap light pad. Like I said, I picked this weapon up on Amazon. I think it was about 25 bucks. And it's one of those LED tracing pads that does not have any of the dots. Some of them have dots to help artists kind of follow along, but those dots are gonna show through your negative and that's not the point of this whole thing. You need something that's completely plain and very um, smoothly lit. So I'll put the link in the description below to this particular tracing pad in case you're interested in checking it out. The next thing I wanna talk about is the actual negative holder. So I use the Essential Film Holder and I find that until I bought this product, I was getting very inconsistent results and just dealing with a lot of frustration. I was trying to kind of hack at this myself and I'm not the handiest person out there, so I was doing a lot of different things that weren't perfect. Ultimately, the Essential Film Holder is just perfect. It does exactly what you need it to do. It's very lightweight, it's very small, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, this is probably the only piece of my kit that is only useful for this one operation, but it's versatile because you can do 35 millimeter and medium format with this particular holder. Um, it's made out of completely plastic, so it's very lightweight. And of course, plastic basically lasts forever. So you don't have to worry about this thing kind of, you know, being damaged over time or anything like that. And it's very durable, even though it's plasticky. A lot of plasticky things feel cheap. This doesn't feel cheap. It feels cheaper than something like, you know, the more expensive metallic ones, but 
at the end of the day, this thing gets the job done and the price is right. I think it's just around a hundred bucks US or something like that for the full combo that I have, the 35 millimeter plus medium format. Um, I have an affiliate link down below as well. So if you're interested in buying it, check out the link below and there's more details there. I also have a couple reviews on this product up here. You could check out these links and that'll help give you a better picture as to how the product works and, and you know if it's right for you. So that covers kind of all of the hard equipment. Um, there's a couple other things that I think are very important for you to check out. Most importantly, you need gloves. Um, you're gonna be touching negatives constantly when scanning and fingerprints just ruin the whole thing. So just get gloves. You need plain cotton gloves or kind of any material you can find. Um, maybe something that's even microfiber that will kind of be um, dust resistant. The cotton ones work great, but sometimes they do leave a little bit of lint and that kind of stuff. So, you know, just buy whatever works for you. But the point is you want to cover your hands um, in case you have any oily hands or if you're sweating a little bit, you don't want any of that on your negatives. The other thing you should invest in is an air blower. So I have a very simple one here that you see, you kind of squeeze it and it blows out the air. Mine also has a brush tip that you can use to brush your negatives and kind of get rid of any debris. Because sometimes for whatever reason, air alone doesn't do the job. So this is very important for scanning because the more dust that you can get off of your negatives while you're scanning, kind of in camera, the less work you're gonna to have to do later in Photoshop. The other thing is when you're converting uh, digital negatives, basically dust can actually ruin the conversion um, in software. So you wanna get rid of as much dust as possible because that actually impacts how the, the software interprets what's going on with your negative. All right, so we've talked all about hardware and kind of physical products. There also are digital products that matter here because in my scanning process, I scan um, quote unquote as a positive. So what I get is a, just a picture of a negative that's backlit. And then I have to invert that in software to give me the accurate kind of color positive version of that digitally. So I use two software for that. The first one that I use, and this is the one I use most of the time, is Negative Lab Pro. You all already know what that is. I've got a couple of videos that you can see linked above here kind of about how I use Negative Lab Pro, but it's very straightforward. The most recent uh, update for Negative Lab Pro really did a good job at kind of cementing that initial um, scan. So when you convert your images for the first time, nowadays I find that it gives me a really good starting product that I don't really have to mess with too much. Um, unless I wanna stylize it or maybe pick up kind of some of the exposure or turn down some highlights. But in terms of color kind of balance, I find that my, my images are very balanced and look exactly as I want them to. So kudos to Negative Lab Pro for that. I really, really enjoy how that works nowadays and I find that it gets the job done pretty much most of the time. I do have another software that I use and that's Film Lab Desktop. And I love having these two kind of, you know, options to play with because sometimes Negative Lab Pro just doesn't give me something that I think looks appropriate. For whatever reason, there are certain images and negatives that when you convert them, they just don't look good at all. And I don't mean like tweaking, like you can make them a little bit better. I mean, they just come out just bad. And you know, maybe there's some user error there. There's something that I'm doing that's causing this issue. But honestly, sometimes I just don't understand what's going on. And I find that jumping into another software will give me something to look at that's less of a problem and then kind of help me understand whether Negative Lab Pro is actually having issues or if it's just me and I need to kind of fine tweak things. So. Um, I do appreciate having both. Some people might think this is a waste of money since I don't use both every time, but Film Lab Desktop is pretty cheap, um, especially if you do the monthly. Obviously, monthly over time adds up, but I still do get use out of it, and I like having the complement. So for my process, it's nice to have kind of a backup. So that's how I use Film Lab Desktop, but it is a standalone product, which basically means you don't need Lightroom or Photoshop or anything like that. Um, if you don't have those Adobe products and you need something that works really nicely, I highly recommend uh, film lab desktop and you can check out a video up above here that i did kind of going into more detail but that is a standalone product you can buy it by itself and the only thing that's really missing that i think it really needs is a crop tool but of course you can crop your images using kind of the the normal photo editor um, on your mac or on your pc whatever you're using you do all your conversions and kind of all your work in inside of the film lab desktop program and then you export that you know as a tiff or jpeg whatever you want and then in your photo editor, whether that's preview or something else, you can then just open that file and crop it and kind of get it exactly where you want it to be. But it's nice to have a product that has nothing to do with the, with the Adobe suite that kind of works on its own. So definitely check it out if that's kind of really high on your list. Um, so that basically covers my entire end-to-end -end kind of scanning operation. Um, as you see, I'm using a lot of kind of disparate pieces to put together my scanning offering. For me, this works really well because I actually owned a lot of these pieces already. You know, I had my digital camera already. I had a tripod, um, you know, I had kind of those basic things. The main things that I bought after the fact were the essential film holder, as I mentioned, because 
keeping your negatives flat is very, very important. And then I actually bought the Sigma lens. Um, and I bought the Sigma lens because again, it gives me that one-to-one -one, uh, scanning kind of area given how close the macro focusing is. And that's very important because the closer I can fill up my entire negative, or, or sorry, the closer I can fill up my entire image sensor on my digital camera, the more resolution I'm gonna have. And my EOS R I think has 32 megapixels. So that's quite a lot of detail. So it works really, really well for me. I actually do own a flatbed scanner, which I'm probably gonna sell pretty soon because I don't really use it at all. And it works, I have the Epson V550, you know, not knocking it generally, but I find that I prefer the, the setup with the digital camera because, you know, the pieces are kind of multifaceted and I can put them together as needed for me. Sometimes I wanna scan in my room, sometimes I wanna scan in the living room, sometimes I scan on the road, you know, when I've gone on trips, I've brought with me my tripod and my digital camera and then the light pad. Um, and that's been enough. Like you can honestly get a lot done with just that. And obviously if I bring the film holder, that's another thing that would get me even better results. But scanning on the road and kind of portability probably doesn't matter for a lot of you, but for me, you know, sometimes I'm kind of thirsty and I want my negatives right away and I want to be able to scan them so that I can see what they look like and post them somewhere. So if you're an avid traveler, then, you know, maybe one of these film camera or one of these digital camera setups is right for you. So let me know, what do you think in the comments? Um, are you using the digital camera method? Do you find that the pieces that I have kind of cover it all? Is there anything I'm missing? That's actually what I'm most curious about. Anything you recommend that I get that I don't have right now that'll really make a difference for me? Talk to me in the comments. Let me see what you got to say. All right, y'all, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave me a like. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. I got a lot of cool things coming up for the rest of this year, actually, and of course, 2021. And I hope you come along for the ride. To the next video, y'all. Peace.